The opinions expressed in this video do not represent YouTube associations, agencies, or any particular individuals. They are merely from two guys needing to pass the boredom of their average day lives. Some explicit content may occur in this or future presentations. Viewer discretion may be advised, but ignored if you're into that thing. What's up, everybody? I'm Wildman West, and I'm the Big Bad Wolf Benning, and welcome to a special edition of the Wild Wolf Show. Well, we've gone up to about, this is our 10th episode. And something like that. Yeah, and we're, uh, we're going to be closing out season one with uh, something a little different. We're not going to do the top five good, top five bad on a movie review. We're actually going to be doing a random review. In this episode, I'm going to be picking a movie for Ben over here, and he's going to do a little review on it, and then he's going to do the same thing for me. So, let's see how this works. So, what do you want, the best two out of three on this, or just, uh... Yeah, let's do the best two out of three. Alright, ready? Here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Damn. Alright. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Alright. Tiebreaker. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Damn. Bam. Alright, I guess I get to Damn. pick one for you first. Alright. Alright. This is gonna be fun. Hmm. We got a couple different ones on each side, so this is gonna be interesting. Eh. Eh, fuck it. I'll go with this one. What we got? Haha, <laughs> you get to do a nice little comedy. All right. Betty's going to be uh, reviewing Bruce Almighty. So, Ben? All right, basic synopsis is TV anchor played by Jim Carrey. Great in this movie, love him to death. He's one of the best actors ever, comedy actors. Uh, so basically, he's pissed off with God because nothing's going his way. God played by the great Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman is always good <laughs> in any type of movie, whether good or shitty. Basically gives him his power to do whatever in... Bruce finds out that it's not easy being God. So basically, he abuses the power, and then of course he learns a life lesson. And uh, yeah, that's basically the movie. Yeah, so what'd you like about it? Oh, it was funny. I mean, I would have been very bad with all God's powers, so I mean, he's pretty tame with them, I think. Of course, you know, I mean, everybody suffers because he's doing stuff to try to impress people, all that good stuff. So basically, yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, everybody would lose fucking control. If they had a power of God, so hey, there's your one minute yeah. review on Bruce Almighty. Wow, that was really quick. It was, hey, I fucking know what I'm Hopefully, doing. you're not quick on other things, buddy. <laughs> Ladies, you'll have to find out. <laughs> oh, Shadaisy. All right, it looks like it's uh, uh, your turn. All right. <laughs> yeah, if, the, if these go quick, we might have to do other reviews on this. <laughs> oh, boy. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? The 40 year old virgin. Well, not counting. Oh, all right. Okay, so I saw this movie um, opening weekend back in, what was it, 2004? Two, yeah, 2004, so yeah, my sophomore yeah. year of college. I was rolling on the, the movie theater floor. I mean, by the time it was over, my sides were split, and I was laughing, yeah, you know, like, uncontrollably. All right, so, anyways, the movie stars Steve Carell, been in a lot of funny movies, Very some not-so-funny movies, but for the most part, I, I still enjoy him in the American... Um, take on the office I, yeah i do i do but it starts off he's this weird weird kind of sheltered guy it starts off he's in his house a lot of uh, a lot of comic books a lot of action figures kind of sounds like I us. it kind of looks like my room yeah mine too uh, but anyways you find out that he's working in a, an electronics store and he hangs out with a bunch of other guys one of them is played by paul rudd very funny and also uh, another one's played by Seth Rogen so he's been known for movies such as Pineapple Express uh, let's see the night before and also he, is you guys know him. yeah you know you know, you know I mean, curly haired Jew it's all good no, um, you know but they his friends realize he's he's a little off and he doesn't really hang out with a whole lot of people so they bring him in to play some cards at, in the in the shop and whatnot and then they start talking about their sexcapades and as Steve Carell's character Andy starts to talk about what he does. They kind of look at him funny, like this doesn't sound right. It sounds like he's lying, and they pretty much put two and two together. They figure out he's a virgin. So throughout the whole movie, they decide they're gonna try to get him laid. And at one point, one of my fun, my favorite moments, even though I don't really like it as much, because I mean, hey, I'm a Wookiee too. Uh, the, the he gets uh, body waxed, <laughs> and, and, and the true story is that, that that actually was real. That was real on set. He was actually getting his chest waxed, and off camera they had a big poster board 
board or even like a dry erase board with a bunch of different things for him to say that are written down like what was it like suck a motherfucker um <laughs> see um, kelly clarkson, Nick, Nick kelly clarkson <laughs> nipple fuck i mean it, it, was, it was great it was it great was, that's probably the best part of the movie yeah well i mean well that, i'm sorry that takes it for well me. I, I would have to say the um the scene where he's in the car with the drunk woman <laughs> yeah. yeah when she's like pretty much bashing her ex-boyfriend and then she pukes all over him right when I'll they get home with you. <laughs> no that's okay that's, that's okay, okay. no but throughout this whole situation of bad moments of everything failing for him trying to get laid he meets this woman around the same age category as him named trish who runs a sell your stuff on ebay store and they start hitting it off pretty well and then then he realizes that she's got a teenage daughter that's been trying to get laid as well, and her mother doesn't want that. So then he kind of takes her under his wing, making her realize that he's a virgin too. And then they they try to figure out how to keep everything going between the relationship between Andy and his and Trish. And at one point, it gets freaky because she, he hasn't told her that he's a virgin, and they go on twenty dates and. On the 20th one, he freaks out, it scares her, and then there's this whole, you know, clusterfuck of, you know, them freaking out, and it all ends with Andy trying to chase her down on a bike while the song Heat of the Moment by Asia is playing. You know how I know you're gay? You like Asia. I would say that's probably my favorite scene in the whole movie, is when Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen are sitting down playing <laughs> Mortal Kombat. I believe it's Deception. I think it is Deception. And they're sitting there going like, oh, I know you're gay. Well, you know how I know you're gay? Yeah, it's pretty funny. You know how I know you're gay? You've seen Made in Manhattan twice. <laughs> no, but I, 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 if you actually have the DVD of 40-Year-Old Virgin, go into the gag reels and outtakes. They actually have an extended, you know, how I know you're gay segment. where they just for a it, it's, it's all improv. It's, it's priceless. That just shows how funny they are because it is pretty funny. But and going back to the movie they realize that they're in love and then they decide to get married and he has sex with her and he loses his virginity after about a minute and then they have sex again it's like 40 minutes and it ends with the whole cast singing the song age of aquarius by fifth dimension i i when i thought that i couldn't laugh any harder that was probably when i just lost it completely so yeah that was 40 year old virgin i these i thought these reviews were going to be longer but, uh, what do you say, Ben? You want to do another one? Why not, man? Pick hey. another one out for me. All right, so let's see. This one was... Okay, those are our those discards. Those are our ones. Dunzo. Mm, Dunzos, Dunzos, Dunzos. Orca the Killer Whale. Ooh. All right, this is a good one, guys. Switch up. So the movie starts off, there's these uh, divers. They're in the water. They're doing research. You know, they're marine biologists. Uh... A uh, ship's coming, like, tell them get out of the water because they're trying to capture a great white shark to, you know, sell to an aquarium. So shark's getting closer to this one guy. He can't get back to the boat, you know, and the tide's taking him out further. So just as the shark's about to, la you know, pretty much kill him, uh, orca whale, which you, if you don't know what that is, it's a killer whale, you know, think free willy, comes and basically saves him. So then this lady goes wait, off. Wait, wait, this is a horror movie about free will? It is a horror movie about free will, people. I'm Hold sorry. Hold me like a Jason's machete, <laughs> like Freddy's razor glove, like Michael Myers' butcher knife. I know, I suck at Michael Jackson, but hey. So yeah, so then the captain's like, well, what the hell was that? And then the lady goes to tell her, it's an orca whale, it's the most dangerous predator in the ocean. And uh, it really they are, they really are. They hunt in pods, which is pretty much like a wolf pack. Uh, they hunt everything. Uh, the only predator they really have that can actually hurt them is a great white shark, but like I said, they hunt packs and great white sharks don't. So, they're screwed. Uh, so yeah, they're, pro they're the apex predator of the ocean. They're badasses, I love them. That's my favorite sea animal. Uh, so yeah, so basically they actually got the captain, who's pretty much like the main character of the movie. He's going to all her classes, trying to learn everything he can about them. Uh, if you don't know, orcas are actually very, very intelligent. They have, I mean, all animals have emotions. I don't care what people says. They all feel fear. They feel love, all that good stuff. So he's learning about them because he's trying to capture them, you know. So one night he goes out with his crew, and he finds two orcas. So they kind of, like, attack the male. The male gets hurt. He kind of, like, swims away to try to, you know, recover. They capture the female, 
bringing her on board though, they kill her. And then, like, you find out she was pregnant, so, like, the dead baby orca that looks scarily like a human baby mm -hmm. uh, is on the deck. So the captain kind of, like, like, yeah, just get that off my boat. So the male orca saw the captain, he looked him in the eyes, and he's like, revenge. So this movie's just a revenge movie. It's like Jaws the Revenge, it's almost. Pretty, yeah, but it's, Jaws 3 when It's the, better. Oh, wow. It's better than Jaws, though. It is. Um, so, yeah. Ooh, that might be some fight. Well, question is, which Jaws? Oh, the first one's the best. Oh, it's not better than Jaws. Yeah, it's better I, than I, all just, the, I just wanted to... It's better than all of the, <laughs> the sequels of Jaws, except just clarifying Jaws on that one, really. So don't get me wrong. So basically, yeah. So the orca follows him back to uh, his little fishing village, or his little dock port town. And basically, he's scaring away all the fish. He's destroying boats and stuff like that, except for the captain's boat, because he wants to fight the captain. So the captain's, like, not having it. He's like, nah, I'm not going to fight him. I don't have to fight him. No big deal. So the orca, like, basically starts just destroying houses that are, you know, in the water. So, yeah, finally it comes down to they fight. They're going to go fight just the captain. He goes, like, up to, like, the North Pole. There's glaciers and shit, and he fights them. He loses. So basically, don't fuck with Mother Nature. It's going to kick your ass. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's a good movie. movie. Like I said, it's not worthy of our five good, five bad, but it's a good movie. Definitely check it out. Uh, I'll have to. I actually have never seen it. Oh, this man, movie. it's a good movie. Oh, hell yeah. It's a very good movie. All right, you ready, brother? You ready for another one? Yeah, to pull shit in the woods. All right, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, Hello, what we got here. A long point. Ooh. One of your personal faves, Van Wilder. <laughs> this will be my love letter to Ryan Reynolds. I am a big fan of Ryan Reynolds. Uh, you know, it's seriously. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm straight, but I'd do him. You know, I'm just saying. You know, Reynolds, he's, yeah, those guys would do that too. Yeah, as long as he talked to me in the Deadpool voice. Oh, that's like that's like butter on bread to me right there. All right, so National Lampoon's Van Wilder is kind of an offset of National Lampoon's Animal House. I mean, Van Wilder is technically kind of like the Blutarski of, of this movie. It starts off where the character Van Wilder is played by Ryan Reynolds. You find out he's been. At the the what was it what college is it again? Oh, Coolidge College. Coolidge College. I was, was going to say Hoover. I was going to say Hoover. No, but Hoover's not Hoover. It's uh yeah. I don't know now. I've I've lost my train He's of thought. Lost. But, oh no. I've oh lost no. My I've lost it. No, but Van Wilder's at Coolidge College. He's been there for seven years, and. He's basically the king of the campus. Now, at this point in the movie, he's needing an assistant because he's realizing most of the stuff that he's trying to take care of in his college life is starting to falter. So he has a little audition for a bunch of people coming in. You've got uh, twins that are, well, not twins, but basically uh, two guys are very effeminate that kind of use a lot of double entendres and puns to make him a little, you know, weirded out. There's a woman who is unbelievably beautiful named Terry that has a very deep voice. Oh, my name's Terry. Yeah. The weirdest thing, well, actually, the interesting thing, there's a really heavyset guy that decides to lift up his shirt and make a lot of, you know, fart noises with his stomach. I actually IMDB'd that guy. He's got to play to Angus. Yeah. 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 yeah, check that shit out, man. It's interesting. I, I, it's, it's really cool. And that movie, Angus, is actually... I like that movie. I, we might have to do a review on that sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. But he... At the end of it, he realizes he needs to hire a guy named Taj Mahal Badlanda Bad. He's played by Cal Penn. Now, Cal Penn... He's a funny actor. Yeah. Oh. I mean, as much... I mean, because... I, I liked him a little bit in the, the Harold and Kilmore movies, but, you know, I... I like felt him. like he was trying too hard? Yeah, I, I like, he's done a lot of um, parts on, like, TV shows uh, recently. I'm trying to think of exactly which ones. I can't remember if it's CSI or Criminal Minds, but... One of those shows? Yeah, one of those type of, you know... You know, they're all interchangeable. One of those law-based shows. It's, it, one of those interchangeable shows that, you know, are pretty much the same, but everybody yeah. has to watch them. <laughs> all right. So, Van Wilder realizes that... He's been sitting there for seven years, and his dad finds out that he's done nothing with his college career. So he decides that he's going to pull his funds, so he's basically going to have to pack up his stuff and leave. And actually, Van Wilder Sr. is played by Tim Matheson, other than Otter, Otter. from Animal House. So it makes you wonder, too, because you really don't know Otter's real name. Ah! Uh, did they say it? I don't I think, think they did, but I'm going I'm to have to... We'll have to double-check yeah. it, because it would be kind of cool if it was just... Him playing Otter, just older. Yeah. So they really... I don't think they say his name in the movie. No. No, they no, they really don't. I don't think they do. 
No, you know, you'll, 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 well, at the end of it, the only thing I can think of is when they go to court. But I don't. Think well, yeah, when when, when uh, Gwen mails him that uh, package and says Vance Wilder Senior. Yeah. That's the only time. You oh no no no! no. I'm talking now. about what was Otter's name from his real name in uh, oh, Animal House. I'll have to double check. See, on I that. don't think they sat in here. It was just Otter. So that'd be yeah. cool tie-in then. To do it that way. Well, so. National Lampoon has been known to tie in a lot of things between their movies. So. I mean, that's what though, like 30 year difference. So it'd be kind of hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's about. Let's see. About 30 years? Like, Almost, or 20, because the Animal House came out around 1978, 1979, and then Van Wilder came out around 97. So, yeah, it was about 20 years. But, anyways, moving back on to Van Wilder, as Van Wilder's realizing that his couch career is going absolutely nowhere financially, Cal Penn's character Taj is going to help him try to figure out everything, and Van realizes there is only one thing that he knows better to do than anything in college is how to throw a party. So he starts throwing parties for a lot of different fraternities, a lot of different organizations on campus, making money to stay in school. And as this is going on, there is a fraternity that doesn't like what he's doing. Dicks. Yeah, Delta <laughs> Iota Kappa. It's like, Richard, you rascal. I didn't know that you were a dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah. Richard and his fellow fraternity brothers are going to try to w find a way to get him off campus. And while this is going on, Richard's girlfriend, Gwen, played by Tara Reid, probably one of the only movies she's actually done okay in other than American Pie. I mean, you know, she she had a lot of potential, but at the same time, yeah. I think fame got to her just like a lot of other people, you know? And I, I hope that if we ever get famous, that that never happens to us. But, you know, I'm sorry, we <laughs> one can only... Yeah. I'm not going to dress I'll, up for you people. I'll just do it for me. But <laughs> anyways, she's a reporter for Coolidge Campus, and she's writing a piece on Van Wilder about him being a party liaison or party planner. And as this is going on, Gwen and Van realize that they're, they got a little some feelings for each other. And a spark. Yeah, and Richard ain't going to have any of that, so he finds a way to get him off campus completely by sneaking in underage kids at one of the parties and get them drunk, and when the police come and see it, he's basically screwed. So while they're planning on expelling him from the campus, Van comes up with an idea. Instead of having him get thrown out of campus as a punishment, make him graduate. So he basically has... A week to graduate. It's almost he's got like, like four classes he's got to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's good. Yep. And then uh, it's kind of like Billy Madison in a way, but at the same time, you know, faster pace, faster pace in, in, in a college. Yeah, a little. Well, yeah, I mean, both of them are great. In I like Billy Madison. Don't get me wrong. That's yeah, probably Adam Sandler's best movie, right next to Happy Gilmore. Yeah. But I I agree with that. But as he's going through all these uh, classes to try to pass, Gwen realizes that her boyfriend Richard. You know, set him up. So they're going. So she decides to screw him over in getting into his Northwestern. yeah Northwestern. I am the shit. You know that type of thing. So she decides to put a lot of laxatives into his protein shake that he always has every morning. And he you know it, colon blow is what it's known as. And, oh yeah, and oh, oh blows. Oh yeah, right in a garbage can, right in front of all the the, oh, the yeah. hopeful colleagues. You know. And long story short, Van Wilder passes, everything's great. He gets and the girl. He gets the girl, <laughs> and... He gets his father's respect. Yeah. And it's basically a movie. You know what happens. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great movie. It's um, the, the, the prequel, it was funny for what it was, but it wasn't as, you know... And then even, like, the little sequel... Oh, just right, right, oh, Rise of the Taj. I wasn't a big fan of that. Uh, but, uh, like but I said, we, we, won't, to... we won't review yeah. that one. But um, the one thing, one of my favorite moments, as disturbing as it is, when Van Wilder realizes that the Delta Iota Kappa or the Dicks are. <laughs> it's just so funny to Talking me. Talking about the dog. The dog yeah, donuts. oh, yeah. The doggy yeah, they, they take the eclairs and take out all the cream and then basically. They milk they, they the jack, dog. They jack off the they dog. They milk the dog. <laughs> Every time I think about that, because, you know, the Colossus or Sea Loss, it makes me think of the Ron that. White joke. <laughs> it's, it's just a little bulldog. Is <laughs> you did it the other day? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite joke from the movie, it's not. I don't know why I find it funny, but. Uh, they go to Gwen's house for like a little get together, oh, and Bane doesn't yeah. know what's going on. So all these uptight doctors up. are yeah. yeah. Richard keeps Richard trying to sets them up. up, and all these uptight doctors are like, "Oh, so what do you do?" He's like, "Oh, you know, I kind of dabble in everything." So Gwen takes Richard with them 
So, like, it's just a little joke, but I love it. She's like, oh, it makes you wonder if he's here, who's running hell? <laughs> right? I love that little joke. I don't know why. But my but favorite part at the end of that bit where Gwen takes Richard aside and starts basically berating him for the bullshit that he's pulling with Van well, Wilder. <laughs> yeah, no, but she walks back to go see, making sure that Van's okay, and she sees Van with her parents and everybody else just partying, and him make, he's making them do body shots off each other. That's just and, the talent this man has at partying. He can get anybody to have fun. Well, and also, one rule that I've always learned is if you can get in good with the parents, dating a girl should be pretty easy. I mean, yeah, it's... Yeah, yes and no ones. So. Moms are easy, so dads are hard. For dudes, anyway. Yeah, that's true. Mothers love me, and fathers I gotta I gotta work on. Me, I'm just kind of in between. I think I don't know. I'm just I'm just kind of here, you know. Meh. I'm All okay right. with it. Well, um, oh, Van Wilder for you guys. Yeah, well, I, as we were saying earlier, this um, we're pretty much closing up season one with this episode. But don't worry, we'll be back. Oh yeah, we'll be back with season two, and we've got a whole great thing for you. Do you oh, wanna yeah. you wanna tell them when season two is gonna start? What's who should be? I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say exactly, but I'm just gonna give them a hint. All I know is I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum. If that, um, yeah. if that doesn't help you, this sure will. All I know is I was rowdy before rowdy was cool. Ah. That's probably a dead giveaway, but hey, we'll take it. Until yeah, next time. Yeah. yeah. Until next time, I'm Wild Mayo West. And I'm the Big Bad Wolf Benny. And we'll see you next time on the Wild Wolf Show. <laughs> We're going to redo that. I think we should just keep it. No. Outtakes. <laughs> yeah, outtakes. <laughs> All right. All right, before we sign off, too, just so you guys know, too, we're definitely going to have, like, an extra episode just all the bloopers because we mess up a lot. Oh, yeah, we do. Mess up a lot, so it's pretty funny. And if you don't find humor in that, you have no soul. Yep, exactly. Until then, I'm Wild Man Wes. And the Big Bad Wolf Benny. And we'll see you next time at the beginning of Season 2 of The Wild Wolf Show. Peace out. Yeah.